All right, welcome to the latest Inside Lacrosse Google Plus Hangout Unit Talk. This time we are joined all the way from Charlottesville, Virginia, by the talented attack unit from University of Virginia, left to right, James Pinnell, Owen Van Arsdale, and Mark Cochran. Say hello, guys. How's it going? Nice, nice. Well, uh, the boys are shaking off a little snow a couple days ago down in uh, sunny Charlottesville, but looking forward to a Sunday noon game up in College Park, the last time uh, most likely that they will be in College Park visiting the Maryland Terrapins live on ESPN. You will uh, have full coverage on InsideLacrosse.com as well. But uh, why don't you guys just kind of start off and, and give me kind of the give us kind of the lay of the land of uh, how you guys are feeling, how, how the offense is feeling right now. Um, offense has kind of been clicking lately. You know, we were able to pull out that that overtime game last weekend against Hopkins, um, which which was a big step for us being able to pull through late in the game. We've been it kind of feels like we've been doing that all year. Um, we're just looking to be able to play like that all game. You know, we haven't put a complete game together on offense where we're really clicking the whole game, and hopefully this Sunday is the day that that happens for us. You know, this game is always a seems like a defensive struggle, a low-scoring game between us and Maryland. Um, so we're going to have to be sharp to get some some balls in the back of the net. What's What's been the key to uh, the chemistry, you guys? Kind of, uh, I mean... I know, uh, you know, Mark and Owen, you guys have been together for a, a couple of years, and, and James, you're, you're a sophomore, but what's been the key to, to this unit coming together uh, this season? Uh, I mean, last year we played together in practice all the time, so we got definitely got a year of uh, the chemistry down last year, and these guys were playing together the year before that, and uh, I think uh, Owen really complements both of us really well when we're, uh, when we're open. He uh, feeds us the ball pretty well, so... We, uh, we always kind of know where each other is on the field. We know Mark's going to be on that lefty wing. I'll be on the righty wing. And Owen's usually bringing it from X, and he, he, he usually has a very good idea of where we're going to be just from working together in practice and uh, just having that last year as, a, as another year of chemistry. Is there anything, anything specific that you guys have done? I mean, maybe for, like, some of the kids out there, high school players watching this, uh, Try and develop chemistry in their own units. Is there anything specific that you guys have done or continue to do to, to build that and kind of so that you can kind of develop that understanding and kind of third you know sixth sense of where each other are? Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if we kind of built it. Um, just like we kind of, I feel like we all, all have a different role in the team. That's kind of how we built that chemistry. I feel like James the feeder or uh, owns the feeder. James shooter, and I kind of try and do both, but like we all have our own role, which makes it really hard to, to cover. Yeah, we, a couple times a week during practice, we have a, a session where we go down with the offensive coach, and it's just the, the attack men, um, and we work through some three-man plays, um, talk through our objectives for the week, um, given our opponent, and I think that that's a, a big piece heading into the game, that we're all on the same page and have confidence in each other, and... Um, I'll, I'll know what we're going to be doing on game day. Gotcha. I mean, you guys come in 8-2. and two. Uh, It's crazy you guys have played 10 games already, but I know you guys are used to that. Uh, but 8-2 and two coming off that Hopkins win uh, last weekend, the overtime overtime game. Uh, what's kind of the, the next step for you guys in, in terms of uh, consistency and, and, and kind of getting to where you want to be offensively? Um, I think, like you just said, the next step is being consistent. You know, we've had some flashes of brilliance and we've had some some games where things definitely aren't going our way um, for the majority of the game um, you know it's good to be eight and two at this point in the year um, I'll take that given our schedule um, but I think that if we play a little more consistently we could we could bump that record up a little more gotcha um... So once again, you guys play uh, Sunday at noon uh, live on ESPNU, and we'll have coverage on InsideTheCross.com. You can, for those of you watching out there, you can ask questions in the Google Plus app. You can also fire in uh, questions via Twitter at the hashtag ILHangout. Um, we'll take this opportunity to, uh, to ask a, a question coming all the way from Princeton, New Jersey, uh, via Jake Fricaro, Simple Jake, one of my favorite uh, Twitter handles out there. Um, <laughs> Asking for uh, James to do his legendary Joker impersonation. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't do that right now. I can't be doing that. 
Uh, how about how about some miracle quotes? <laughs> Good to hear from you, Jake. Good to hear from you. I was talking to him this weekend about his uh, ten goal game. Congrats on that. Yeah, have you guys ever put up ten ten in a game? I'm sure you have somewhere. Uh, uh, probably I don't not. Think I have. I Mark probably Mark yeah, probably yeah, has. Exactly there, but not a while. I don't think I put one up. <laughs> put a ten goal game up. What? I, but but maybe following on that, describe what it does feel like to just have a game where you just feel like everything's hitting. The goal is the size of a barn door, you know, barn. Like, what does that kind of feel like to have a game that you're just on point everywhere, every angle, firing on all cylinders? I mean, when you're firing on all cylinders, your <laughs> confidence is at an all-time high, and I feel like you feel like you can't miss, and it's probably, probably the best feeling. I feel like the key to that is always to get off to a good start. I feel like um, I like the first goal, the first shot, so important. And if you get that, you get a couple, you keep it going. And you know, some of those days, I, I haven't really had a game this year where I've gotten really a big goal in a, the big uh, breakout game against a good team yet. But uh, you know, Jammer had seven against uh, Syracuse. I feel like he was kind of on that confidence level against them. Yeah, just getting a couple early, I think, is is huge. I mean, a couple in that first quarter. Then you go into that second quarter just so much more confident, and then you end up having you realize you look at it and you're like, All right, I got like three or four in the first half here, and then your shots. I mean, with with the guys we have on the midfield and we and the guys we have next to me, I mean, you're gonna be open, wide open on the backside sometimes, and you know I, I got to be lucky to be that guy on the backside, and you know you get a lot of shots, you're gonna hopefully a lot of those will, will go in. Yeah. Um. What are kind of the feelings about uh, heading back up to College Park again? You guys gonna miss that miss that trip or, or no? Uh, in the next next moving forward with Virginia, um, it's always fun playing the Terps. College Park is a good place to play. We always get a, a big turnout. Um, I I wish we could play every game at home at Clockner. I think it's the best place to play um, in college lacrosse. But uh, but it's cool getting to see other teams' fields. You know they always have a big crowd. Um, and it's always a great game between us and them. Um, it's more the the rivalry between the two teams that I'll miss than than College Park. Yeah, I've never been there, so I, I mean, I watched my brother play there, but I've never played there, so it's definitely going to be a, a fun experience. The, the stadium is uh, really awesome, and looking forward to to playing a, a venue like that. Yeah, I was going to ask you guys uh, to to talk about Clockner a little bit in a couple of the polls we've done online. Uh, Clockner has come up as you know a fan favorite for lacrosse venues, and it's definitely you know right up there for me in terms of the places that I've been. Um, well, describe the atmosphere and, and kind of the the I guess the tradition that you guys have built at that stadium. Well, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> you know, it's the best. yeah. It's, I guess I've been there since yeah. like ten years old, almost every UVA game. But uh, yeah, on like a Saturday afternoon, hope. This year we haven't really so much, but usually we get a nice sunny day. Um, and there's just a ton of people. You know, it's it's not too big of a stadium that that it's overwhelming and the, that the you know the crowd can't fill it. So you, so you know you get eight or ten thousand people there, and you feel like it's a it's a packed house and it gets pretty loud. Um, and the field is so nice. Um, it's really pretty pretty place to play, right underneath the mountains. Um, it's a it's a really cool atmosphere when you get a big game there. You know, when we get into the heart of our schedule, like right now, um, you know, we have Duke coming out there in a couple of weeks. Uh, that should be a big one. Um, it's it's always fun playing at Clockner. Yeah, yeah, I feel like the Virginia fans are always rowdy and uh, into it. I feel like that's probably probably Virginia is probably one of the better programs um, that has like the loud fans. But um, I also feel like the not that many stadiums have the uh, the fans that get to hang out on the hills and around the stadium like that. It's just it's awesome. And the feel like Owen said, it's always in such great condition, and the guys do a great job at that. So. Yeah, and just seeing the same people every every week is kind of cool, you know. Like, with how many people come to the stadium, you, you recognize people that are there since the first game of the season when they're freezing cold, and, you know, they, they, they tough it out, and you see them every week. It, it, uh, it really uh, means a lot having, having seen people like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's still freezing cold, unfortunately. But but going back to that first game, that Loyola game that you guys played, you know, was was uh, has been called like the you know the most viewed game on Twitter uh, in history or whatever. But I mean, everybody was watching that game. It was crazy. 
But uh, talk about that, and, and I mean, that was seems like six years ago at this point, but w just what, what was that game like and, and, you know, playing that game in that environment so early and such a big game so early um, and what you guys kind of took from that one? Well, coming off the season last year where, you know, we didn't accomplish the things we set out to, it kind of had a disappointing year, you know, not even making the playoffs. Um, that was huge for us to, to be the first time that we get back out there against another team and to get that win against a really good program who has obviously had a really successful year also up to date. Um, that was huge for us and huge for our confidence, especially to pull out a one a one goal game like that. Um, you know, the ball didn't bounce our way in the one goal games last year. I think we lost four or five in a row uh, right around this time last year, uh, four or five one goal games. And and that was that was tough to handle. Um, but I think that, that, you know, we worked hard enough in the fall that we feel like we have an advantage um, when it comes down to at the end of the big game, just because you know we don't want to feel like we did last year at the end of those games. Yeah, I mean personally, that was one of the craziest games uh, I've ever been a part of. Uh, you know, we had the lead early, and we thought we were gonna uh, kind of exploit them a bit there. Then they came back, eight goal, nine goal run, and uh, then came down to the wire. And we scored with zero point one left. It was just it was crazy, and it was one of the greatest games to be a part of. Um, yeah, what was kind of, you know, going back to last season, what was kind of the, the message that, that you guys, maybe, you know, obviously you had the disappointment of finding out you didn't make the tournament. What was kind of the message that, that the coaches left you guys with when, when, you, when you guys left school or, or stayed to school? Whatever, whenever the year was done, what was kind of the message that you guys left with? Um, I think that the feeling among the whole team was just, I can't wait to get back out there again. And... To, to have that lingering, you know, in our minds for nine months, waiting for to play the next opponent, um, it really brought us to a whole new level of competitiveness, practice in the fall, and, you know, getting getting ready for the spring. Um, I think that that's helped us so far this year. Yeah, I think just watching, like, teams play in the playoffs, too. I mean, I felt like we kind of were coming on to something special towards the end there. I, we just missed the playoffs, but I felt like if we were a team that made – the playoffs last year, I feel like we, we definitely would have beat a couple teams because played Maryland real well, UNC in a tough one. I mean, we, we, we were really uh, starting to get into a, like a, a good groove at the end of the season there and just missing us, the, just missing the playoffs and <coughs> then having to go see other teams play. I mean, it's, it's never fun watching when you, when you know you should be out there. So, so James, did you go and watch all your brothers' playoff games? I did. I yeah. did. So was that awkward, or I mean, obviously. No, I mean, I uh, I love watching him play, so that that was that was cool, just watching him play. But you know, it was awkward not seeing uh not being there with Virginia, you know, a team that's usually a a Final Four team there, and uh, turning some you know making making some big runs in the playoffs. So it was yeah. uh, it was a little weird. Gotcha. Um, I mean, James, James, especially you're having you know seems like a breakout year compared to you know the the year before. Did, did question for you, but for everybody as well. Did you do anything different this off season as kind of in, in preparation for this season uh, coming into the fall? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I mean, I definitely practiced uh, a little more, but I, I would say more what what made me have a success this season in the spring was definitely just how I practiced in the fall. It was uh, coach told me I just need to be more consistent every day and working harder every day, no matter what. So I think it. Big thing with me was just trying to be more and more consistent. Last year, I just showed kind of flashes of what I could do in the fall and in the spring. Got hurt a little bit, but now this year, just trying to you know stay consistent with how I played was was really what uh, I think has made the difference. Yeah, I feel like the thing with with James last year was just that he was hurt. You know, you you could have seen the James that we're seeing this year a little earlier had he not been hurt. It's tough to come in as a freshman and. Yeah. Be practicing half the time and be ready to really show show your stuff, but you know this year is healthy all fall, able to work with me and Mark the entire fall, and that's when it really started to click. You know, you could tell that he was going to have a breakout year just based on this fall. And Mark, for you, I mean, did you uh, were you playing box again this summer? Or what was kind of your your summer like? Maybe a little different than these guys. Yeah, it's actually really weird. This is the first summer I haven't played uh, box probably. Uh, probably ever, and uh, it was kind of. I just wanted to take the year off, and I uh, didn't really want to like push myself too hard and get hurt just in case. In my last year here, I kind of 
want to uh, lay low a little bit, but um, I mean, I still practice every day and work out every day, so pretty normal stuff there. Well, what's I mean, there's uh, and so many Canadians doing such you know so many great things in the NCAA. Uh, what kind of speak to the the value of box the box experience and what that kind of gives your game outdoors? Uh, yeah, and it's it's interesting to see actually how many people are doing so well from um, in Canada these days. I feel like ten years ago it was completely unheard of, or not unheard of, but uh, definitely less. But uh, I just feel like like practicing shooting on goalies on the smaller net. And in the smaller space is just the biggest reason why uh, they're so su successful um, scoring goals. Just you need to be like shooting a smaller area and be able to fake and just have um, just get the goalie moving a little bit and use your body and and stick to kind of fake the goalie out. I feel like box definitely helps you uh, do that better than than field does. Yeah, yeah, the influx is crazy. I can't imagine it was probably what one or two guys when your dad was playing back in the day at uh... crazy. NC State. Um, Usually, like when uh, when Greer was there, uh, not that many. Like Greer, maybe like five, six other guys that were noticeable. And now it's just, like dozens. Yeah, no, it's good to see. It's good for the game. I think it's good for Team Canada as well. Um, for the other guys, any funny, uh, any funny Canadian jargon that you picked up from uh, playing with these guys? I, I love the different lingo that uh, Canadians use. Yeah, we got a couple. I mean, we got uh, we have a freshman <laughs> on our team, Joe French, who is a. Uh, He's a, He's, a real character. He's a real <laughs> character. I mean, what comes out of that kid's mouth is Emo. absurd. Yeah, he's got some... Uh, we can't be saying that, though. He doesn't want anybody knowing about that. But uh, we got a beauty. Beauty. That's a, that's a big one. They're talking uh, about pumping each other's tires. <laughs> <laughs> pumping tires. Uh, uh, what else? We a. Just A. Marky Bod. Typical stuff. Buddy. Mar Marky Buddy. Nothing, got, nothing too much. <laughs> nothing too much. give me a hard time sometimes, yeah. but... Yeah. I'm sure it's tough. I'm used one to it. I'm one used of the to only it. Canadians on campus. <laughs> yeah, probably one of like time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's that's hilarious. I mean, it's it's so. But the Canadian accent, like people like stereotype it, but it's pretty true. Like you know, I mean, I would in my experience, like talking to guys in the NLL, like it's it's hilarious every time I talk to those guys. <laughs> but uh, who are the other characters on the team? Uh, give, give us a little insight into uh, the makeup of uh, the roster. Who's Who's uh, the the jokesters and who's kind of running the who, who's you know having the most fun out there? Um, Probably on the field, Frenchie. yeah, Frenchie. Frenchie's, Frenchie's got, he's got some Ryan, stories. Ryan Tucker. Tucker. Yeah, he's Ryan Tucker. he's so enthusiastic every day. You know, he's he's cheering everybody on. Like you you miss a shot, he says it went through the hole. There's the wind. <laughs> <laughs> every time you shoot the ball, he cheer. He gives you a little cheer. Um, <laughs> so he keep kind of keeps the energy up at practice. Um, Arena in the locker room is a clown. Yeah. Marino, <laughs> Marino's always making people laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Just nice. <laughing> noxious. <laughs> we have a lot of people. Zeddy, Zeddy talks a lot. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know it, but Zeddy's the biggest boy on the team. <laughs> he rips <Tell> it. <laughs> nah, he's a nice guy, but he's always, he's always he's messing a with people. Yeah. He's a real jokester. He's a jokester. Nice, nice. Um... It looking at, I mean, some of the other freshmen. I mean, uh, Matt Matt Barrett and goal. I mean, what's kind of your take on how he's been transitioning a lot of a lot of big games pretty early for him, and uh, how's he been looking? Uh, he looks great in practice every day. Um, you know, he's just been. I feel like he's been building confidence in the games every week, and he really had a breakout game. We have, I think, sixteen saves this past week. Yeah, among the top ten against Hopkins, and they have some really good shooters. Um, he was working hard in practice all week, and you know if he keeps that up, I think that that he'll keep showing good things. He's a really talented young goalie. Yeah, no, he's he's a hell of a goalie, and he actually you might not look at him and think it, but he's got really quick hands, which makes it even tough, especially on the inside. And uh, I feel like for the goalie, being a freshman uh, goalie is probably the toughest position to come in um, as a freshman, but uh, he's done a great job for us, and he keeps getting better every week, which is kind of what we're looking for. And uh, if he keeps going, he's going to be a great goalie this year and definitely throughout his career. Gotcha. Um, another guy who's been playing well of late, you know, Ryan Lukovic, who's been mixing in with you guys on attack. Uh, what's what's your take on how he's been so far and, and his potential for, for you guys? Um, he reminds me of Steele a little bit in the way that he passes the ball. Um, he, he can't shoot the ball like Steele did. He's just unbelievable, but... He's he's the same kind of passer as Steele. He can split to either hand. Um, 
and draw this slide and and find the open guy almost every time, you know, either side and in close he can finish. So he's he's definitely a threat coming from behind the cage as well. Um, and it's it's good to have someone like that that can play sort of anywhere on the field also. Um, so you know, and if if any one of us needs a rest at any point in the game where we just need to mix things up, you know, we can we can have any three out of the four out on the field at the same time and it works. Nice. Um, looking back at the schedule so far, I mean, the couple losses that you guys had in a row. What, what do you what do you pull from those games and, and to try to improve? I mean, the Notre Dame game just seemed kind of crazy, but uh, what, what do you kind of what do you, when you look back now a couple games later? What do you see in those games that, that you want to work on that you think you can you can kind of improve before uh, before May hits? Uh, one of the biggest things the past couple weeks we've been focusing on is just making sure that every possession ends in a good shot, whether it means being patient in our, our shooting selection or just making sure that we aren't sloppy moving the ball around early in the possession. Um, and that's really all that we can control on the offensive end is just making sure that, that we're getting good opportunities every time the ball is down on our end. And, and also we've been making an effort to ride the ball back a lot. I think that we're pretty good at that, and, and we've been successful with that so far this year. Gotcha. Um, what well, has the addition of the the younger coach stars have been so far this year for you guys? It's been good. I mean, I uh, I got to know him really well in the fall because uh, I was uh, in there a lot for academics. I had to meet with the uh, with the coach, and he he was the academic part of the uh, process. So uh, I got to know him really well on and off the field. It, it, it was really nice getting to know him. He's a so I like Coach Starja, honestly. He reminds me a lot of uh, Coach Starja, so that's always good. And, uh, yeah, he's just a – you can always talk to him. He's a good, great guy to talk to. And he, he seems like he really he really knows what he's doing on the defensive end. Yeah, I, I, I grew up sort of with Coach Joe because um, our dads are, are so close. And, uh, you know, it's been interesting getting to know the other side of him as a coach, and I think he's done a really good job um, taking in our defense this year and done a great job with them. Um, and yeah, I think he's, he's a good addition to the team. I mean, he does, he does sound exactly like Dom, though, right? Like, doesn't he talk just like him? Yeah, they have a lot of, a lot of the same yeah. mannerisms. <laughs> Who, uh, so who's got the best uh, Dom impersonation on the team? <laughs> Yeah. I, don't I, don't know. Know. No, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Who does a good one? Uh, Gladding. Gladding is a good one. Yeah. Pat, Pat Gladding loves Dom jokes. <laughs> That's his sense of humor. Dom. Nice, nice. Well, that I've 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 heard some funny ones over the years. They're uh, it's pretty funny, but. Um, who uh, it, it, the, I, I was like asking a music question. Uh, what who's kind of controlling the music for you guys, and what what what's your pregame typical style of music to get you guys fired up? Marino, yeah, Marino. Marino's yeah, Marino. always the DJ. He gets a lot of uh, like electric dance music. Mix mixes in some like rap music with that. You know, R real Long Island boy. You know, likes his <laughs> likes his techno, likes his rap. You know. So that's usually what we listen to, whatever Marino's got on his iPod. We call him uh, DJ Dizzy Dan <laughs> in the locker room. So he's always good with that. Nice, nice. Uh, well, we had a question coming in, uh, a, a good one from, uh, I don't recognize this name, but uh, it's Rob Pinnell, I think. Uh, <laughs> do they sell razors in Charlottesville? <laughs> Uh, yeah, they uh, they're really bad though. They can't cut this 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 uh, beard, and you know we like to keep it a little scruffy. You know we're uh, we you know we're a little uh, tougher guys here, <laughs> yeah. so we like to keep it a little little rigid, rigid. Can't get the good razors down in Charlottesville. I see. All right. Um, nice. Well, uh, another one from uh, the Who fan, Mark. Have you and Joe French been working on that one-handed wraparound shot? Uh, I feel like uh, French definitely has more than I have. I try and just put the ball in the back of the net where he's more of a flashy type of guy. I feel like dude, when you watch him play, it's it's kind of funny, but uh, you know he's an unbelievable player and he he does things that you just kind of marvel at. It's it's, it's hilarious too. At the same time, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, nice. Well, I I, I think. Uh, it's interesting for me. I always like asking people like what kind of, especially for you guys like. 
what was the key growing up to, to getting better and whether it was something you did on your own or something that you did it you know with teammates especially for all three of you you have you know pretty strong family connections in the sport you know be it you know brothers or fathers or both uh, what was kind of key to you guys getting better as you were coming up in the ranks I feel like maybe just trying to work on every part of your game I feel like I mean you you can always be better at everything, you know, shooting, passing, you know, working out, like, always trying to be the best you can be at every part, and I feel like if you if you can do that, then uh, you can just be the, better, the best player you can be, and always just trying to get, add things to your game, make you harder to guard, and more ways to score. Yeah, just trying to stay humble, too, <laughs> with, like, all the success that all three of us have had, have had at the beginning of the season, and throughout the season, I mean, just treating it like, Every day is, you know, just another day, and every game's another game, and we just go out and try to play our best. Yeah, it's just making sure that that you go out there and and play the best that you can every day, um, and just leave it all out on the field. Do you guys? I mean, did you guys feel pressure from like expectations wise? You know, again, whether it's you know being Rob Pinnell's brother or Mark Barnardsdale's son or you know Stan Cockerton's son. I mean, th those are pretty heady. Uh, family connections to have. Uh, do, do, is that something that you guys ever think about? Is it factor into anything you do, or do you just kind of? Is that not even anything that you ever think about? I mean, I know it. I mean, it's it's obviously there. Like you're conscious of it being there. But honestly, I mean, just try not to to think think about it too much while you're playing. You know, I mean, it's always going to be there. You know that there's going to be certain expectations, but you try not to let that control. You kind of just try to be the player who you are and the person that you are. So. And, you know, I've never gotten pressure from, from my brother or anybody else, really, to, to, to be like him or, you know, to be better or something like that. So he's always been pretty good with that, and so is my family. So they, they treat me as the player I am. Yeah, I've, I've never felt any pressure um, from my dad. You know, when I first started playing sports growing up, I wanted to be a professional baseball player. I was playing Little League Baseball, and I, I refused to play lacrosse for a little while. And... Um, that was all right with him, or at least he made it seem like it was. Um, eventually, I started playing, and you know, he still he still never pressured me to to work on anything. The only thing he said was that if he was going to work, go out in the back and shoot with me, I had to work with my offhand for like ten minutes before I could start playing left-handed. But um, that was about it. Just just making sure that that I'm doing it the right way when I when I'm playing. Yeah, I, I haven't really gotten any pressure at all. Um, you know, actually, you said that you wanted to be a, a baseball player growing up. I kind of wanted to be a hockey player growing up and uh, probably quit that and decided I wanted to play college lacrosse when I was uh, about 13, 14 years old and kind of went in that direction. But before that, I always wanted to play hockey, and uh, that was kind of my one, number one thing. My dad was always supportive of that. But I, I, always, I always cared about lacrosse as well, and those were my two main things, but I didn't know at the time. Gotcha. Um, you know, for all three, all three guys growing up in, in totally different areas. You know, Long Island, uh, you know, Charlottesville area, and then and then uh, Canada. Who were kind of your lacrosse idols growing up that you really kind of looked toward, uh, looked at as kind of somebody guys that you wanted to emulate? Um, for me, it was anyone who played lacrosse at UVA. You know, <laughs> I was when I was a a little guy. I was around the team all the time. I went to you know practice every other day and. Spent so much time with them. Um, I looked up to all of them and, and learned a lot from them. Um, you know, specifically on the field as players, some guys um, over the years, just to name a few, Ben Ruby or Matt Ward, uh, Connor Gill, just, you know, the, some of the most successful attackmen here. Um, and that's who I wanted to, to live up to be like. Yeah. yeah. Ben Ruby is definitely a name that I kind of looked up to being the lefty attack uh, at Virginia. Kind of wanted to emulate him and uh, play like him, but um, he was probably from Virginia, probably the the guy I looked up to the most. Yeah, I just grew up watching my brother play, so he was always a guy in my eyes that I always thought was like you know just the best player. I always loved watching him play and I always rooted for him. And uh, definitely a lot of those UVA guys, Matt Ward, Ben Rubier. I mean, also Danny Gladding. I loved watching Danny Gladding play. I mean, he was just. An attack and that was just different, you know, real athletic guy who uh, who played the game with, like really, really crafty as well. So I really liked watching Danny Gladding play. 
Yeah, one of the smoothest athletes uh, I've seen in, in lacrosse in a while. Um, well, one of the last questions we'll ask, uh, how do you guys think the UVA hoops team is going to do uh, tomorrow night? Uh, they're, they're going all the way. I think, yeah, I think they're going to go all the way. I think they're going to win by, uh, by about 10 over Michigan State. <laughs> Nice. Good, that's, that's what counts. That's, that's pretty bold. The good defense counts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. of yeah. my boys. They got the pack line D. They got that D. Yeah. Nice. How, yeah. how how different and exciting is it to have? I mean, that's the first time they've been that good in a while. Uh, how much of a difference does that make on campus? Um, it's crazy. Everyone's kind of been there supporting them all year. You know, n <laughs> until they actually ended up winning the ACC and winning the the ACC tournament. It was sort of like, you know, when is this going to stop? It's sort of out of character for for the basketball or football team at UVA to be that successful. And uh, it's been really cool to watch. They have, they have something special going. I hope they keep it going the next couple weeks. Yeah, I wasn't even really a college basketball guy. I've always loved the NBA. So uh, definitely just coming here and seeing that team and the success they had, you know, definitely gets you interested a lot more. And, Definitely been a lot more interested this season in, in college basketball because of that. Nice. Well, we wish the Cavaliers the best of luck in hoops on Friday, and then uh, you guys playing at Maryland Sunday noon live on ESPNU. We'll have full coverage on InsideLacrosse.com as well. Um, we appreciate the time. Uh, this has been great. We wish you guys the best of luck the rest of the way. And then I guess just last question: You know, what should uh, what should the fans expect out of the Cavaliers the rest of the uh, the rest of the way this season? Um, honestly, you should probably expect some more, some more heart attacks. <laughs> it seems like that's the way things are going for us this year, but hopefully we keep on, uh, staying on the winning end. The, you know, we've been, we've been working on being able to edge out those close games. I think that's what we're going to have to do the rest of the year, just to stay successful. Some great games. I mean, we got the ACC yeah. part of the schedule coming up, so those are always, uh, always battles, so definitely going to be an empty couple of entertaining games to watch there. Yeah. Nice. Well, yeah, the ACC tournament at PPL Park this year. That should be exciting. Um, well, James Spinell, Owen Van Arsdale, and Mark Cockerton, we really appreciate the time. We wish you guys the best of luck. Congrats on an 8-2 and two start, and uh, best of luck the rest of the way. Thanks, Thanks John. Thanks.